Hello and welcome to an introduction to uh, Welly Gig Media Player for the VR headsets. Um, so this is the main screen, this is a clean installation, so this is the first screen you'll see when you t actually start up the player. Uh, I'm using the uh, Vive uh, headset and it's got a couple of Vive controllers here but I won't be using these controllers for the actual um, demonstration. Uh, you can just use it in the same way but I'm going to use your mouse just because it's easier for where I'm sitting. Um, just to clarify with the controllers you do have a kind of an identical controller on the actual um, on the actual controller itself uh, but I'm going to close those down and go to using the mouse. Uh, now this is a demonstration and uh, currently in the headset this menu looks fine but it, it looks a bit kind of anti aliasing on the screen here so I'm going to change the actual quality settings for this because it will improve it for the demonstration. I'm going to change anti-alias to a zero and I move this up to three and that will sharpen it up for the actual demonstration. I'm also going to uh, going to set it full screen. So let's start off. This is the main uh, UI that you'll see when you first start player. Uh, you can change this main UI uh, but I will just go over this main se section here. We've got uh, Explorer here which will open up that. This is the time bar. We're currently looking at a still image so you don't get anything on the time bar. Uh, that's the same for the volume control. Uh, play, uh, forward, backwards, skip to next, skip to back. We have the settings button here. This resets the location so it reset in front of you. Uh, this changes the depth uh, in stereo so that will be in stereo on the headset. Uh, this is the menus button which I'll look at later and the safe button which I'll also look at later and quit. Uh, so let's first off open up a actual film. Uh, so I've got a little collection here so Sentinel, this is quite a nice film. Uh, if I go here you can see that it's a film like so. So this is like a 16.9 and it'll automatically open at the correct aspect ratio based on the dimensions of the film. Um, now I'm going to go to settings because I'd like to change a few things. So if I click on settings here Go to projection. Uh, so projection, you have different uh, collection of default settings for the different uh, options here. So if I, if you look here, so we have scale. So that changes the scale of it. So that changes an actual scale of the uh, screen, not the distance. Uh, the distance changes the distance. So that's the equivalent of 24 meters away, uh, 2.8 meters away. So that'll actually feel closer in the headset. So if I reset these back, there's also tilt here, which will allow you to tilt it up and down. Now to help the demonstration, I'm going to actually change the theme background. So I'm going to go to Interface, Themes. You can change the behind scenes here. Uh, um, you've got clouds, you've got like an actual 3D uh, setup here as well. You can change it too. Uh, I'm going to just do it as, uh, I'm going to do it as that there and give me a kind of nice background so it's a bit sharp around the edges. Uh, you can see what's going on. Uh, so a couple of other options is that Cinema has its own uh, options here to allow you to change this part here and uh, this here so you can change it to like that you go to a slightly more there we go um, so you can make it more like a, an IMAX screen uh, so uh, and you can just reset them back and I'll create a flat image if you wanted to but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it a little bit like that uh, now I've set up something that I like and can actually save those presets out. So if I click on presets and I double click here, there we go. Uh, that saves the preset out, so cinema, scale, tilt, distance and stretch. And then if I want to load that up with any other video I can do so. Uh, so go back to projection, we have multiple options, so cinema is for flat screens as you can see. Uh, we've also got barrel which is the equivalent of equirectangular. So uh, often YouTube videos come in equirectangular which is a wrap all the way around you. Uh, fisheye which is uh, for fisheye kind of playback which normally looks like a circular system. Custom format for lots of other formats that don't fall into any of those categories and rooms. Now I'll go to rooms first because this actually works quite well with rooms. Uh, so as you can see we're in a uh, we're in a living room here as you look around and we can sit and play it and, uh, and feel like we're just sat in a living room like so uh, but we have a few more options we've also got a cinema screen which takes you into a kind of personalized cinema screen bedroom uh, which is kind of a bedroom like a cinema hotel bedroom drive-in cinema like so like the, uh, seats next to you um, what else have we got 
uh, living room. Uh, so we've got dome tilt. So if you're watching a fisheye or a planetarium show, you can watch it in a dome. Uh, and we've also got dome flat. So if it's designed, oh, if it's designed to be in a flat dome, that would be like so. Uh, if I go back to cinema, we have stretch as well, which stretches and unstretches it. Now, if it should come in at the correct aspect ratio, but sometimes, like it's a 3D film, it'll actually be half the width. So you can change the stretch here to being twice twice the width uh, to get that correct again. Um, if I reset that to zero, so we've also got depth here uh, so we've got monoscopic stereoscopic uh, side by side and stereoscopic over under um, also uh, we have uh, mono on pause so at the moment uh, if you're looking in the headset and you're watching a 3d film uh, when it's paused it'll still be stereo but if I click that on then when it's paused it'll go back to, it'll go to mono uh, allowing you to not hurt your eyes a bit if you want that on it's available there force mono on all depths so you'll get the actual uh, correct sort of look for um, for your side by side or over under, but instead of it being in stereo, it will be in mono. So say you've got an old film that's not very well done in 3D, 360, and you want to still watch it, but it's side by side, you can use that. Also detect depth, that actually auto text, whether it's a side by side or over under um, or mono based on the actual file name, uh, it'll just automatically switch to it if you've got your file on the same setup. Uh, stereo order left and right uh, so normally it's the left eyes on the left and the right eyes on the right but sometimes they're switched around you can switch around here uh, stereo separation that gives you allows you to change this uh, stereo separation in a 3d film so if it feels too close that can push that back for you and make it a bit more comfortable uh, other projection uh, options we have is brightness and color so you can change it like so um, change it to increase the brightness, decrease it, and then just quickly switch them all back to... Uh, all these settings are saved per uh, film, so if you uh, set your colours on one film and then want it to be different than another, it will be different than another, uh, you can then set it to be different than another. We've got background glow here, so if I switch background glow on, you can see it creates like a rim around the actual uh, screen. Uh, now if that was on black, and I'll quickly jump to black, uh, it's kind of a brighter glow, but it's uh, it's not additive. So on a, a, on the thing that we have, it's uh, it's it's darker. So I'm going to quickly demonstrate on the brighter glow. Uh, so I should go back to playback. Uh, not playback. Uh, background glow. So we've got glow size. We can increase the glow size like so, and we can increase the saturation. And you'll notice when we play it, the actual background glow should change based on the actual. Part of the video. So if I actually jump to a different tool point, so you can see it'll be a bit yellower there and it'll be more purple there. So it actually is it's reactive to the video that's playing back. So let me go back into settings and switch background glow off and put, uh, put the theme back to hands. Uh, and then we've got advanced, uh, so we've got uh, we've got a place thing which is currently in development. So it's, uh, you, you, you need to, if you want to find out more about that, you can talk to me. But hopefully, it will start to make more sense in later versions. And you've got a positions menu which allows you to move the position up and down. So that actually moves the player rather than the screen. So I can actually move the position a bit up and down. So if I wanted to sit and have it higher, I could do so, or left or right. So I reset them back to zero. Um, and that uh, will also save within the file uh, for each, uh, save within an e file for each of the actual videos that you watch. Uh, we've got uh, when the headset is removed and put on, so this allows you to have it reset to zero or, or pause the video or start the video um, based on what you want. Uh, it's a little difficult to demonstrate here, but you can switch them off and have a play around with them. Uh, save any file with media. Now, a media file will have an any file with it. Uh, when you save it, it saves into the roaming folder, so when it loads it up, you can see it, and it will load that from the roaming, roaming folder. If you choose to save the INI file with the media, it will save an actual INI file of the same name of the media next to it, and then when you load it, it will load that INI file up. So say you've got settings that you wish to keep for a certain video, or you wish to pass them to other people, you can simply save them in the INI file and then pass them on. A uh, time code so server is pretty much what it says here, allows other programs. So there's a couple of programs that will work with Whirly Gig to actually use a time code to operate things like a, 
a uh, kind of vibrating seat or or a kind of wind wind sort of interactions and things like that. So any programs that wish to actually take the time code from the video, they can do so there. Uh, so, but you, you'll read about that with the actual programs. A uh, suppress so loading on save, so it won't automatically load the actual uh, any file, but just take it on from the previous one. So if you're going through a load of files, you could switch that on, and it would allow you to skip through a name, and it's just going to play the last one. Uh, so that's an advanced and playback. I jumped to advanced and playback. That's interesting. Uh, so uh, video paths. Uh, there's several video paths that are available. Uh, Media Foundation, Direct Show, and Video LAN. Uh, the uh, Media Foundation is the default one for Windows 10, and that has quite a few uh, codecs in there. It doesn't necessarily support them all, it doesn't support all the video sizes. Uh, Direct Show is I, my personal favourite, which once you've installed the LAV codecs, that will give you full access to pretty much any codec available for it. And uh, Video LAN uh, gives you a collection of uh, codecs already built into it, and it's based on the, VL, uh, the same. Uh, code that VLC uses. As uh, so you can switch between those and uh, sort of have, uh, you know, whichever one you prefer. Subtitles, uh, WellyGig supports subtitles. as a built in subtitle support uh, which you can switch on here and you can also switch that to Arabic. That will use a SRT file that's with the actual file. It only supports the SRT file, um, but if you have one it will be, uh, and switch the subtitles on it, will use that. Uh, Video LAN has its own subtitle system you can also use. This will actually allow, to s allow support for subtitles that are actually built into the uh, video themselves, so they're muxed in and you can switch them on and use those subtitles. It's not as good for things like 3D films because it won't actually uh, support the 3D film because um, it will cut it in half, but it's something you can try if you wish to actually use those built in subtitles. So, we're going back to play, playback options. We can, uh, we've got standard playback options like loop media, video, fa uh, de uh, load factory default media when Whirligig starts. So, instead of loading the previous video, it'll load the uh, Whirligig startup. Uh, screen instead, so you can have a fresh one, a fresh screen on every time you load it up. Uh, resume from previous time when Whirly Gig starts. So if you click that on and you're halfway through a film and you close down Whirly Gig, when you start it up again, it will ask whether you want to uh, continue watching from that place. And if you do, you can just carry on watching, uh, in like if you're halfway through a film. All these are disabled as a, as a standard, but you can switch them on, and play on, play with them whenever you like. So we got start play media once on load once loaded. So automatically start playing the media straight away. Uh, automatically load next track. So once it gets to one track, it will go on to the next one. Previous media skips forward and backward. Uh, so uh, many videos will actually allow you to see the video when you're skipping forward and backwards, um, but some don't. So I've left it off before, and it will just sort of you'll see on the timeline moving forward. Uh, but you won't see a preview. But if you want to try the preview skip from back, you can as well. And you can also change the amount the actual skip pause backs there as well. Uh, time between slice save changes. Now, if you're watching video as uh, you're watching uh, stills, uh, you can press play on them like you would a video. And then when it gets to the end, it will automatically switch on to the next uh, next actual picture. So you can watch it as like a slideshow. Uh, so uh, currently, it's five seconds between uh, each slide, but you can increase that if you want to. Uh, so track one, uh, so we've got tracks, You can, if you click there and there's multiple tracks that will go through them and then you've got your standard volume, so up and down volume and then you've got the playback speed which is what it is. So that's the playback interface, so now let's look at the interface. Uh, so uh, we've got menu options, uh, glue interface to user direction, so if I click on that, uh, so if I do that and then it will automatically appear directly in front of me where I look when I play and pause outside of the media. Uh, you can also do that with projection. So if I do that with the projection, it'll always appear in front of me. So if I wanted to lie down and watch it, I could do so uh, quite easily like that. I'm going to click those off so it kind of sits in front. Uh, so clicking outside the interface plays the media. So if I switch that off, it'll just stay paused. You should play, you can play and pause here. So say you want to see stills and you just you could switch that off and then hit play and there you go, you'd have a sort of still uh, you click outside. And gaze timer, which is a kind of work in progress, but you can actually play and pause without actually uh, clicking anything. Uh, still still needs some work on that, but uh, it's an option in there so you can play around with it. I'll switch it off for now. Uh, alternative menus. Now, as I said before, this is the main menu, but you can change these. So for instance, we've got a different menu here. 
uh, another menu uh, and they might they have varying amounts of controls on them uh, based on these options so it's much less on that one uh, an incredibly simple one there uh, go back to the default one uh, whatever menu you choose will the same menu when you start up again themes I've kind of briefly touched on already and quality I've touched on already right at the beginning monitoring allows you to have uh, you can turn off desktop mirroring like so um, you can have full screen which I've done here and you can also have independent monitor now if I click independent monitor in the headset it is still continuing to work in exactly the same way as it did before so you're looking around I'm looking around and you can see now stop using the mouse the controls are actually moving around with the headset however on the monitor and the mouse control in front of us we can actually just use the actual player as as a playback system so the person in the monitor is seeing it in full 360 degree playback as you'd expect yeah I'm being able to control it fully with the actual monitor instead so if I wanted to demonstrate things to friends I could easily do that and uh, and just show show them as we go go through uh, it allows me to look around if I want to and even if I, I could actually watch it back on a glyph while they're watching it back on the actual screen so uh, I've got a, an actual tutorial that goes into more details with that but uh, that's something quick to look at uh, what we're that's for monitoring other we have several display options you can choose to display, uh, disable the mouse or disable the VR controls um, you've got a uh, each one has a whole selection of, you can change all the different ones to all the options that are currently available. Uh, and we have uh, Gamepad Touch 5 or Mixed Reality Headsets. Now on Switch, you've got a Mixed Reality Headset to represent that and Keyboard. So you can play around with these and change all the settings as much as you want. Uh, presets I've touched on before and I'll touch on a little bit in a minute. Saves, if I double click on one of these, it will save my position and it will save the actual file and it will tell me when I saved it. Uh, and I'll also demonstrate that in a second as well. So let's load up another video. So this is a video by Aaron Bradbury, it's called Vortex, and it's a, this current version is a fisheye 180 side-by-side -side stereo playback. Now if I go back into projection, like so, we also we have fisheye here. So if I click on fisheye, you can see that is now a fisheye, but it's uh, not side by side. So if I tap on side by side, that is now side by side. I know it to be a 45 degree tilt, uh, so it's minus 45 degrees tilted upwards. So I uh, so I've got that nice and comfortable. Uh, diameter, I'm going to leave and rotation. Rotation will rotate around the actual. But I'm not going to I'm not going to play around with that. Uh, so then, uh, this is a good preset because I've got lots of films like this, so I'm going to save that preset there as well. And while I'm at it, I'm going to save it in there. So I can play that back and I can look around and see that in 3D, like so. Now if I switch to say, and I wanted to look, uh, if I've got my saves, I just wanted to go back to here, so I can go back to here, and then it will play there, like so. And if I go back to Vortex, like so. So the settings are all saved in there, but let's say I open up. Now, when I open up a new film, it will open up exactly the same as it did last time. So uh, uh, all the settings from the previous one, uh, it just uses those. So let me choose um, Cosmic Laundry Map. Now, if I go into here, you can see that it's actually set up as a fisheye because that's the first time this has been loaded and that was the last one that had that. But I saved a preset, so I can go into here, I can tap presets, double click on cinema, and we're back to cinema. And that will save all the presets. That saves the background that you use, the position and everything. Uh, and you can have quite a few, you've got up to 18 presets available in there. So that, that that's, that's how that works. Uh, and if you want to clear them, so let me save that position. I wanted to clear that. I just hit clear and that's gone. And that's how that works. So you can play. Pause. Um, so other options. What, am I what other options are there? I'm not totally sure. If you have problems with the player, like I do update it on a regular basis, but sometimes you might get a bug or you want to reset it back to, uh, to completely uh, factory reset, you can clear history. 
clear history will delete all of the any files for all of the actual uh, films that you've watched so far within the roaming folder so they won't have any settings already set up for them and reset resets the whole thing so it deletes the whirly gig folder in the roaming folder and makes a backup of it if you want to use it but then when you start it up again uh, it will be a complete factory reset and uh, I think that's it for now. Um, I'm going to have tutorials uh, on all of the different options uh, that go into it more, more in depth. Oh, there are a couple of other things on others. We've got webcam support, which I'll also have a, an actual little uh, tutorial about. And we also have streaming options for playback streaming videos. It does play back YouTube. It's something I hope to improve uh, better in the future, but it will play back YouTube. Again, I will have uh, tutorials based on those as well. Uh, so I hope you uh, look like uh, Whirly Kig and look forward to getting your comments and feedback and any features that you want to see in the future. And uh, thank you. Thank you for supporting me and uh, happy watching. Bye.